Hello, everybody, and welcome again to another episode of The Risk Matrix with James Junkin. The Risk Matrix is awesome. I love us getting together once a week to talk to special guests like we have this week and Bill Vandesang. Right on. So that's with James Junkin and myself, Dr. Martin. And again, uh, as James said, we have Bill Vandesang on. He's a master trainer with Verforce. Um, he has a multitude of talents with James will re recount after he gives us a word from our sponsor. And today we're going to talk about uh, driving safety. Hey, big news. Uh, last episode, we introduced the fact the risk matrix is going on the road for a live episode live show of the risk matrix in new orleans louisiana at the verifor select client event may 15th and 16th so that means we're going to have actual live guests some interaction bringing back brett Get uh, kettlecamp who's a shareholder and attorney with ogletree and deacons and so it's going to be really great if you want to attend please come down uh, and visit us there at the Verifor Select client event. Be great to meet some of our listeners. You don't have to be necessarily a, 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 a within the client network of Verifor to attend. Uh, but if you are, uh, we would like you to come. So check it out, verifor.com forward slash NOLA dash client dash series. The event will be held at the historic Higgins Hotel right across the street from the World War II Museum. And as someone who lives in the New Orleans metro area, when you come to New Orleans, it is worth the trip to go into and see the World War II Museum. So a lot of good things going on. Bill Vanessan will be a speaker there with me as well in some of our breakout sessions, but I'm super pumped that the Risk Matrix will be live May 15th, New Orleans, Louisiana, Verifor Select Client Series, Higgins Hotel, Cross from the World War II Museum. Welcome, Bill Van de Sand. You're in the Thank matrix, you. baby. Thank you very much. And I think it's appropriate that you're going on the road and you're going to talk about driving safety to get there. Absolutely. Right. What what better theme could we have? So <laughs> to introduce our guest, fellow master trainer, Bill Van de Sand, also the uh, vice chair of the Verifor Strategic Advisory Board. I uh, really like Bill. He's meant a lot to me in my career as a mentor, as a friend. Bill shares our our dedication, Dr. Martin, and Verifor's for getting workers home safe uh, from high hazard jobs. And in this episode, we wanted to talk a little bit about driving safety. You know, when we talk about hazards in the workplace, we usually talk about hazards associated with high risk activities like confined space entry, like working at heights, uh, energy isolation, and all those are appropriate. But oftentimes we leave out probably the most dangerous thing we do every day. Uh, bill which is back out of the driveway yeah and the statistics show that 27 percent of the deaths that happen in the oil and gas industry happen in vehicles and that and that is uh such an important thing to remember and to think about uh i i know we hear statistics a lot and we tend to get in our vehicles and we drive and we do something we knew we know is not uh the, the best thing to do no consequences. Well, I guess it wasn't really all that dangerous. We give ourselves permission to do bad stuff. That happens with drunk driving. That happens with distracted driving. It happens with so many different things. And part of what we want to do is get rid of those myths and, and talk a little bit about uh, the attitude that people have that contributes to their, their bad decision making. You know, when I, I did a little bit of research in preparation for this, this course, and I know you did uh for, for this course for this session that we're having today but i know that you did a lot of research in preparation for your development of a course that bear force is soon to launch uh this month safe driver but in my research in the latest data from 2021 there was an estimated 6 million 102 936 police reported vehicle accidents in the united states in one year Man, yeah. that's simply amazing. Yeah, uh, you found the same the same research paper that I did from the CDC. Yeah, uh, and NIOSH also had uh, a study. Uh, Almost forty thousand were fatal. 
Okay. Yeah. But, but let, let me add in here as, as somebody who's been former law enforcement, those are the ones that are reported that go on a police report. Okay. Absolutely. So, so we're talking a small fraction of, of vehicular accidents that happen um, in the United States in a year. So, so yes, that's big, but it's much bigger. It's much bigger than that. But I, I'd like to come back to that, Dr. Martin, and, and, and kind of supplement that, that data for a second. So if you look at the 6 million number of police reported accidents and th 39,000, almost 40,000 were fatal. That gives you a death rate of 0.7%. But Bill, say that again about the percentage in the oil and gas industry of overall fatalities. How many of Over those were automobile accidents? Overall, 27% were involved a vehicle, whether it was on the highway, whether it was on a, on a site, uh, what, whatever the, 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 um, uh, the location and the type of vehicle, it's everything from your, your small car to your motorcycle, to your light duty truck, to your F-150, all the way up to, uh, uh, forklifts and other vehicles. And, but the primary one that we're concerned about and the primary one that's involved is going to be the over the road and then, uh, onto a site, um, uh, that, that, that uh, we lose control of our vehicles. We lose lose control of ourselves. Uh, but twenty seven percent. I mean, that's you know we're we're almost at a third. We're somewhere between a, a quarter and a third. Uh, and the numbers that you cited were were rather large, and they're and they're accurate. So you're you're twenty six times more likely to be injured or killed killed in an automobile incident in the oil and gas industry versus that of the general public. That is amazing. Yep. That is amazing. So that's something we want to talk about today. Uh, we want to hear about your research into driver safety and what Verforce is doing in order to offer an opportunity to try to mitigate and reduce that number to get these workers home safe from high hazard jobs that include driving. I, I don't think a lot of the research is going to be a big surprise. But the what's a surprise to me is the same thing when, when we do programs like H2S. And we we discover, for instance, that having a, a 20 minute video and a 10 question quiz uh, is inadequate, we're still killing people. It's it's not news. But it's what are we going to do about it? And we we covered that with H2S. Now it's a three and a half to four hour program that you've got to go through. Now, and when we think about driver safety and, and all the rest of, of that, um, what I've discovered is uh, there, there are four key elements. Uh, it, it, it's going to be, uh, what are they? I wrote them down, speed, tailgating, impaired driving, and distracted driving. And I put in a fifth one because if you look deeply into the context of each one of those, it's attitude. It's attitude. It's what we think about. Um, it, it's that getting getting permission to do something that's wrong. We give it to ourselves because there are no consequences. Mm -hmm. And that leads to a little bit faster, a little bit faster, a little bit tighter on the driving. I used to do defensive driving, National Safety Council version of defensive driving. And one of the things that I would do when I started all of my classes would say, my name is Bill Vandesand. I'm going to be your instructor today. And I want you to know something. Nobody, and I mean, nobody cuts me off in traffic. And usually you'd get this, well, what, what are you going to I say? It's real simple. You know, those reflective things we've got those mirrors. I can see that guy in the background. that's going back and forth like this. And I know exactly what he's doing. He's cutting in front of people. So immediately I start to slow down back away, give a little extra room. That person comes up, I gesture to them, there's your spot, because he's going to go in there anyway. Yeah. So my attitude is, I don't want to be involved in a collision. And the simplistic yeah. way to put it, and I've, I've turned it into a motto, if you will, uh, for, for our, our program that, that we developed for Veriforce. And that is, I intend to drive to get from point A to point B without having a collision. That's my attitude. That's my filter. What's going to contribute to doing that? Not speeding, 
not being distracted, not being impaired, and not tailgating. And there, there are lots of other things that we can throw in there as well. So, so Bill, I know that you were a really good National Safety Council instructor because uh, I actually took that for one of my companies, uh, took that, and there, and there was a question on the test. I got one wrong. I got one wrong, and I'm gonna I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna own it, Bill, because this goes to your story. Um, it asks you. You see somebody behind you weaving back and forth and acting erratically in traffic. What do you do, right? And uh, I picked speed up to get away. <laughs> well, it, that, just depends, that, right? That was wrong. That that answer was wrong. Uh, for for those of you listening, and Bill's answer was right. Right, you move to the right and let him pass. Right, because you'd rather be able to see them in front of you than than trying to escape them. But uh, I'm going to own that. But uh, but you're a real good uh, National Safety <laughs> Council instructor. Now you completely come clean, and I'm sure that you feel much better. I <laughs> you, I do I you do. You can rest easy. <laughs> but uh, now I'll never get it wrong again. That's right. Um, yeah. The I'm problem not is we say I've never sped up, but the the, the problem is with uh, uh, was it Sidney Decker with with his his book Drift into Failure. And we'll, we'll focus on that one and then we'll drift into failure in other ways when it comes yeah. to defensive driving. Absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. know, I wonder if in your research, Bill, what is it in the oil and gas industry that makes driving so much more hazardous than that for the general public? I mean, the general public's numbers are atrocious. Uh, looking at 2000 in COVID, average 107 fatal car crashes a day 2021 118 2022 117 fatal accidents a day so what's making it more dangerous that sounds horrible enough what is it that's making it more dangerous for those drivers in the oil and gas industry it's the nature of our business it's the nature of our dispatching it's the nature of the way that we schedule people that we have extended hours. People are working 12, 14, 16 hour shifts, and then they've got a three hour drive to the next job. And they do that the same night as they finish the job. Uh, so ex ex uh, extended hours, uh, long commutes. A lot of, a lot of times uh, you've got a man camp or you, I guess uh, whatever you want to call them, you've, you've got an outpost where people go to live while they're working uh, in the oil and gas industry. And as, as their jobs get further and further away, uh, extended driving times uh, also contributes to it and insufficient sleep. And there's a number of different reasons why we get insufficient sleep. One of them is we get hyped up at the end of the day and go have a couple of beers and we don't have enough time left over to sleep off the beer, let alone sleep off uh, the fatigue that's developing. And people don't, adequately understand physiologically what happens when you get into sleep deprivation and you don't make it up by in one day it, it takes it takes days and days to make up uh, for that lost sleep and you're now prone you're prone to being fatigued you're prone to falling asleep another national safety call one, one of the one of the quotes in one of the little videos that i really liked was the problem with fighting sleep is that sleep will eventually win. And, that, and that's uh, when... No doubt. No doubt. I think all of us can attest to that I've fallen asleep while, while driving before. Uh, I find that when I'm traveling a lot on long trips, and I routinely make a trip that's five and a half hours to six hours of drive time on the highway, I find listening to podcasts like The Risk Matrix helps me stay focused and engaged, mentally engaged, as opposed to listening to the radio where, you know, it's just kind of on in the background, that kind of thing. Uh, that's just <laughs> that's just something I do to stay awake. Here, here's some other statistics about Texas. And Texas is very important in the in the energy uh, markets for the United States uh, and where a lot of this activity in the oil and gas industry is on ongoing. The most fatal accidents in 2022 happened in Texas. They had 4,496 fatal car crashes that year. That was a 36% increase over 2019. And here's, here's something else that's a correlation. 
Texas has the most total lane miles of any state. More roads, more highways at 654,923 miles. And if I wonder if the size of Texas and the distances we have to travel, and then sometimes the roads are not, were not designed the infrastructure to contain uh, the public general, general public transportation, normal commercial transportation. And now we have a lot of oil and gas transportation, whether it's water haulers or crude haulers or rig moves or just the number of pickup yeah. trucks with a, a trailer behind it that's got a skid steer on it or whatever, if that's not helping contribute to some of these uh, fatal accidents. I, w I would think the answer to that is this yes. I know from the statistics that one of the most dangerous highways in the country is I-20. And if you look not just in the Permian Basin, for instance, but you look all across I-20, uh, you'll, you'll find that there's a lot of major cities involved in it. Dallas, Fort Worth being the next next largest, and then going east, and then going west, you get into uh, wide open country. And one of the things that we do here, when you're in when you're in Midland, uh, the speed limit is 65. As soon as you get out of Midland, go towards Odessa, it gets up to 75. And once you get out towards Pecos, it's 80. Well, you don't survive a crash at 80 miles an hour. It's very rare that you do that. And it's more likely that you're going to have a crash because you're going to lose control because of the condition of the road, an animal running across the road, sun gets in your eyes and you miss the turn, your wheels tip, you know, dip onto the side of the road into the sand and you're, you're going, you're going flying. So there's many different things. And we've got a couple of different highways that are like that. It's almost like the old timey days when they, had uh, what uh, reasonable and whatever whatever that was that used to be on the speed limit signs out in the middle of the deserts. And it's like, no, the speed you're going isn't reasonable. <laughs> well, that would, that would be, it just depends, right? Yes. Oh, that, that's the answer to a lot of questions. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in the research, and I, I find a lot of, good data in the research out of the CDC that, that helped inform some of your opinions that you used in the development of this new course, Drivers uh, Safe Driver uh, Driving Safety Course, uh, launched by Bear Force this month. 2021 was the third year in a row with an increase in the number of speeding-related fatal crashes. Simply amazing. Yeah, I wish they had more recent data, but that's the the, uh, the most recent I've found is the 2021 stuff too. And um, NIOSH, let me, let me let me find my note here because it was one I wanted to make sure that I shared with you. But NIOSH did a research of uh, 500 people in the oil and gas industry, and they found that uh, two thirds two thirds of the people involved said that they had fallen asleep or been extremely drowsy when they when they were driving and that's associated with uh driving from one one location to another or driving after a heavy day uh hard work and the other one is uh, the statistics are abysmal uh when it comes to pedestrians as well we 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 don't just lose control of our vehicles out in the middle of nowhere I mean, when you're flying in to the to the Odessa area, uh, Midland Odessa uh, Odessa area, you can see all the pump jacks, but you can see all the city too. And um, we're we're driving all all throughout the the city. And early in the morning, when uh, for, for instance, when I'm out there and and going to Odessa College to do one of our train the trainers over there, uh, there there are pickup trucks with logos plastered all over them going 70 miles an hour down university avenue which is a 35 mile an hour speed limit as a fact that's us that's us uh, as that's, a fact that's as attitude fact. and that and that goes to i'm late to work we'll get up earlier well i'm exhausted we'll go to bed earlier i mean it's like do i have to be your mom and, and unfortunately i think in a certain way so we have to figure out a way to be their mom. <laughs> well, here's a way, and, and Dr. Martin, I'm going to let you jump in here on this, right? There is a way 
to help keep people honest. We used to say this in, in the Navy, locks are to keep honest people honest. Dishonest people can defeat locks, right? But locks are there to help honest people stay honest. And I think some of the uh, in-cab uh, technology that's out nowadays can help drivers stay honest. So you familiar with any technology in, in the driver space, Dr. Martin? So, so I, I just wanted to add to, to to your comment there about you know locks for for common uh, keeping uh, honest people honest. Uh, my feeling is, and and maybe Bill can Bill can uh, tell me I'm right or wrong, or it just depends. My feeling is is that a lot of our our problem um, with with actually on site work and going to and from job sites have to do with the fact that. Um, we want them to be honest and we want them to do the right thing, but we also want production and we also want uh, long hours and we also want to make uh, make profit and we want to do all these things. So um, I'm not so sure that there are tons of people that are willing to put those quote unquote locks in the cab there, uh, James, to to monitor their people, unless you're a transportation company um, that is fully doing transportation. I don't I don't know a lot of. Um, DOT companies uh, that are crazy about the new DOT uh, telematics in, in, yeah. and that type of stuff. But that, that's just my opinion, right? I mean, uh, we can talk a lot about technology, but I, I don't think that many people are using it for the purpose that that we're talking about here today, which is to prevent some of the deaths that occur outside of that type of thing. Well, I think in the DOT realm, which is a little bit outside, what we're talking about, it's a segment of what we're talking about here. Uh, the electronic logs have tried to work on the fatigue factor, right? There's no cheating on your electronic logs anymore. You used to cheat on your paper logs all the time. And I didn't know a driver or a company that didn't bend the rules at some point uh, to get things done. But, but I'm, not I'm not just talking about that. I'm also talking about um, putting the telematics in the vehicle uh, to tell when people are 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 cheating on the speed and and those types of things yeah. too. I just don't think I don't see companies it, wanting to do that. It's not super popular. It's not super popular right now. But mm -hmm. I think if you're keeping with the philosophy of hazards are best controlled in the planning of the work, then you need to put barriers and defenses in place. And that is a barrier and defense to know who is our problem drivers. So we can either re-educate them or we can take them out of the position of driving. Now, that's one element of it. The second element is I live in the real oil and gas industry where a lot of these jobs are very physical. They're often done in the heat and fatigue is a factor. If you ask a company, do you have a fatigue management policy? Yeah, we got a fatigue management policy, but do you use it? When we talk about driver policies, we usually talk about journey management policies, which a lot of people have the policy, they don't really utilize it, but it's designed for these long trips, not these daily commutes from my home to the job and back, or from the man camp to the job site and back. And I, I think we're missing the boat in, 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 you know, when we're not examining total worker experience. Why are these drivers uh, having these incidents? What time of day are they having these incidents? Why are they falling asleep? Sometimes it's not because, you know, I stayed home, drank beer to 10 o'clock at night, uh, whatever, and had to get up at four and I didn't get enough sleep and I'm sleep deprived. Sometimes it's because I put in 16 hours out here working all day on the job. It was you know, two hours to get to the job, 12 hours on the job, two hours uh, coming back. I think in the as we plan the work, we have to think about what are we asking of our employees? What are we asking of our employees? This is a hazard just like any other hazard. Yeah. Let's examine the hazard and let's look at the work conditions we're putting people in. Many times these accidents happen when drivers are alone and working at night. What's your lone worker policy? You know, so it it is a it is a huge issue. Okay. Texas leads the nation in speeding related fatal crashes. 
1,387 in 2021. They followed only uh, secondly by California. Now, those are two very populous states, so more people, more accidents, right? Uh, but still, this, this fatality number for oil and gas workers seems to be outside the norm. It seems to be way more than what we're seeing across other industries and way more what we're seeing from the general population. So if I want to keep my workers safe, I probably need to start thinking about things that we can do from a control standpoint that reduce driver fatigue, increase driver focus, et cetera. And I think that's one of the values of Bear Force's new driver safety program. So you were uh, immensely involved in the development of that program. Bill, tell us about the program and how that may help bend this trend of worker fatalities in driving, particularly in oil and gas engine. Once again, one of the things that I took as a, as a guidepost was the development of the H2S program. And the reason I bring that up again is because it got very scientific. It treated it treats the um, it, it treats the employees like they're intelligent adults instead of just a need to know basis. And what I tried to do was go through and find things and talk about the physics involved in it and why do you lose control of your vehicle? Uh, speeding is not just uh, a magic thing and all of a sudden you speed and you crash. You you speed and you lose friction on the on the on the pavement. You start to slide going around corners. You've got momentum going in one direction in your vehicle, trying to uh, overcome that in another direction. The contact with the road becomes important. I want to treat you like an intelligent human being. Uh, and you'll notice that when when you're at uh, at, uh, at the uh, uh, NASCAR races or one of the others, when you're going around a corner going 225 miles an hour, it's not on a flat surface. It's banked. It helps you overcome that. And, and that's the kind of thing that I, I wanted to get in there. Uh, the uh, concern about sway. That's one of the things, as, as a, someone who tows a camper with an F-150, I have to know about sway so I don't lose control of my vehicle. And having a good, good hitch is important, but also simply understanding the physics of it. You have to load in front of the tires towards the tongue the more of the weight than you do behind the tires Otherwise, it's going to it's going to go into what's called sway. Another thing that a lot of people don't know about uh, sway is that, in fact, what happens is the trailer ends up moving faster than the vehicle. And that sounds like, how is that even possible? Well, the momentum uh, changes and the uh, acceleration happens as the, the uh, trailer tries to come back across. If I'm going 60 miles an hour forward, and my trailer's trying to get back behind me, it has to go faster than that in order to get back over. And then it goes past. And now we get into this and it all tips over. And th the point here is I'm, I'm not trying to get too deep into the weeds, but I wanna be able to make the point or, or try to make the point with people, you need to understand a whole lot more than what it is like driving your uh, hot little sports car to work or driving your motorcycle to work, or even driving your F-150 to work. And then you load things like uh, totes on there that have liquids in them. Well, when you go to turn, the liquid doesn't want to turn either. So you get rollover that can happen. So speed becomes very important controlling uh, go going into, into turns. And another, another thing that isn't in the program, but that I ran across again, when I was doing a little quick review before uh, coming on today uh, was the, the three crashes that actually happen in a crash. There's the vehicle that crashes. We all kind of understand that. There's the crash that happens with the people inside. They either crash against their restraining devices or they crash against the window or fly right on through. But the one that does the worst damage is the crash that happens inside your body. It's when your brain crashes against the front of your skull and your all your other internal organs crash against your rib cage. That's when the serious damage is done. You know, it isn't so much that you got cut on the forehead it is that that sudden stop caused, caused your brain uh, to get into a concussive state. And, you know, the, these are the kinds of things to go beyond uh, just saying it, it's really bad to speed. 
Well, oh. why? Well, what's what's the result of it? What does it contribute to? Not just on its own, but what does it contribute to? Anyway, that's that's uh, uh, so in, in somewhere I was trying to go. All these okay. things are are great, and I think very useful for workers that operate vehicles. Tell us a little bit more about the course, how long it is, some of the contents. Uh, uh, it is about course. it is about a three and a half to four hour course. It it is. Um, I identified those those five uh, the, the big five issues that are involved. Tried to get into some uh, cursory depth with those elementary depth, and then try to tie back to each one of those. The other thing that I did was a series of attitude adjustments because I really do think that attitude is a, a real important part of it. And um, uh, some of some of the some of the attitude issues. I, I tried to write a couple down. Um, I'm a skilled driver that what's risky for you is not risky for me. I know what I'm doing. I'm a really good driver. You know, and I, I, I'll usually say, as far as I'm concerned, uh, the only two decent drivers in this class are James and me, and I'm not too sure about James. In other words, I want to have, I want to have a, a good sense of skepticism about everybody else on the road. It doesn't matter if you're a great driver. You may think you are, and you may, you may very well be Rusty Wallace. But Rusty Wallace flipped over 26 times and almost got himself killed. He was such a skilled driver. Down in Talladega. Because in, in, in the confines of that particular race, he was, he was out of control. Okay. Now, none of us are saying that we're that skilled a driver, but we still think we're a whole lot better than we are. I can dodge things when they come up real, real quickly. No, you can't. You can only do what the physics allows. And if you don't understand the physics, you're going to talk yourself into doing some really dumb stuff. And, and what, one, of the, one of the things that, that I, I always try to get into uh, in, in a lot of different situations, but specifically in this, when it's, well, who's responsible? Well, you know, I, I have a right to this. I have a right to that. And there's that old saying, yeah, you, you had your right when you were dead right. We don't want to, we don't want to go there. And, you know, old, old truisms are called that because they're true. And as far as responsibility goes, if you could avoid it, if you could have prevented it, and you didn't because you had a right, then you're responsible for it. I didn't, throw, I didn't throw that trash on the ground, but if I see it, I own it. Well, the same thing here. If you see something about to occur, you, you have the responsibility not to exercise your rights. You have the responsibility to act like an adult. You know, a few years ago, we went through this phase of hands-free devices with vehicles, right? And I remember one time, uh, I was on the road and I got a call from a, a worker at Shell about something. I don't even know what we're talking about. And the worker asked me, said, Jamie, are you on the road? I said, I am, but I'm using a hands-free device. She said, look, our policy is not to be a distraction. When you pull over somewhere, call me back, even though you're using a hands-free device. I don't want to distract you. So I think that that's, that's a, an example of sort of being proactive and having company policies because distractions inside the cab are a major cause in these vehicle accidents. And, and I'm guilty of it as anybody. I'll tell you, man, life is not stopped for me as a consultant just because I get inside my vehicle. My phone rings all the time. My emails go off all the time. But is answering that email while you're driving that text message worth your life. See, nobody anticipates that we're going to have an accident until we have one. Yeah. And I've done things in vehicles that I'll get to. I've sent texts. Uh, you know, I've, said, I've responded to emails. And what happens? Anytime I pick up this phone, I slow down and I start drifting. Right? right. Either over the line or over the side of the road. Almost 100% of the time. So I try to make myself say, okay, I'm not going to go touch the phone for text or email. I'm not even going to check that stuff. It's going on over there. When I get to the next place, 
and, and stop and, and, and go to the bathroom and get a coat or whatever I can take care of then. And that, that, that form of self-discipline, that, that is, it's, it's easy to talk about. about. It's harder to do for. When it's it's easy to talk about, but there are some things that, that it actually sort of the journey management is the phone goes off, period, before the, the car starts, right? It, right. it, it, it is it's turned off positively. And I, and I will say this, I've, I've done, done some work for the National Safety Council, and I have had my pants free, free, and I have hung up on them and said that pull over, stop the car, Get, get safe, safe and then call me back. back. So, so I, I mean, they take I, care of it. I had a personal experience that convinced me that it's absolutely true. true. I was driving right down, down long, long, long down, down, down Henderson. Henderson. I don't know if you know that without a text exit, but, um, but it, it, there's nothing, 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 nothing in Henderson, Henderson, and there's nothing, 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 nothing coming south. south. Um, for for two, 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 fifty-nine is what it is. And then it takes the left hand turn, goes out to, but now it's like sixty-nine, and. Very, very, very busy, busy intersection. intersection. I was talking, talking about my wife on my own. Phone. It was hands free. Hands free. And, and when she finished, 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 decided where we were going to go to dinner, dinner, dinner that night. Uh, I, I hang up and I realize I don't recognize where I am. am. I stopped and I looked at my map. I missed Henderson, Henderson by seven miles. miles. I'm totally unaware that I had gone through that town. Totally unaware. I assume I might run into red lights. I assume I might get into the desk I've done that. But the, but the truth of the matter, matter is, is, I have, I have no, no idea, idea this is this day. day. And, and that convinced me. That's scary. I know exactly nothing. Look, look. It was all that long ago. Hands free through the ice. Dropping on the car. Headed back to my mother's house in Alabama. No one else was burned. Ridden out of the road. 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 Got a gay conversation, missed, missed my, my exit, and then didn't realize, realize I missed, missed my exit till I was already over the state, state line. line. <laughs> and, and had had to take a 45 mile detour and back to my, back back to my house. house. So, so the point is, even so though we don't have devices, devices in these hands free devices, that better let us put the ball on down, you know. You know. There's still still be be distracting. And I, and I think that, that, that that's something, something that, that, that tells, tells us we're tripped these, 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 these are tracks, tracks, you know, no, we, we think, think we're all right, right, right safe, 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 we don't have, have our phone in our hand, hand. But, but our mind, mind is not on the road, our mind is engaged in conversation, and, and, conversation. and we, we can miss an entire town or an exit of that town a hundred thousand times, I'm 52 years old, man, I've driven that road. For, for 58 <laughs> years, uh, uh, at least as a child, child and then as an adult. Yeah. If, if we, we can wait, 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 I got to do math here. You're 52 years old and you're not driving 52 years? Well, well I used to sit in my granddad's lap and drive. We were going to cover in that day. I just had to get you there, James. Yeah, yeah, I'm going out south, I got to start driving a lot of things. I'm just going to be like my business partner, Joe, and I'm the math geotician. I have to be able to be able to say you're 52. I'm 72. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm still making the same mistakes. mistakes. So, so you would drive it only for, for 69 years, right? Right. right. That's, that's right. We're a safety profession, right? Right. So, so if you don't have any of the key points, three, three of the key points uh, that constantly, constantly come up is, is hands, hands on the wheel, wheel eyes on the road, mind on driving. And if you break any one of those, you are by definition distracted. And and the conversation. Now, now how, how that gets applied and how we take advantage of that and use that. I, I wish I had a magic pill to offer. All we can, All we can do is treat people like adults and really, uh, really um, give them some new information. We, we, do, we do talk about spotters. We do talk about uh, backing into spaces so that when you're pulling out, you're pulling forward and you've got full full view. So we, so we get into some of that. We get into... Uh, some, some of the issues, issues that are associated with the access roads. Uh, uh, for instance, some of them are perfectly paved one road. road. Some, some of them are uh, gravel roads. Some of them are sand, sand that gets pretty deep. I came to an intersection, intersection well, not really an intersection, but a, a widening in the road one place. And I, and I saw a, a, a guy coming in the other direction going full tilt. And I, and I thought, this is not really very safe. But it was the only way he could get across the sand. Just, just uh, like trying to get across water. water. I, I thought, oh, well, maybe with my little 
uh, my, my little car, I had better back up and do the same thing he did, or I, I might not get across the sand. It was, and it was lucky that I did because I was fishtailing all over the place. No, no other traffic. But what's going to happen when that back wheels finally grip? Are you going to be like this? Are you going to be forward? Where are you going to be? And is it going to go into a tree? Not, not good stuff. Uh, but, uh, as we kind of wind down here, I'll, I'd like you to talk a little bit about a unique feature to the Air Force's Safe Driver Program, which is the drive behind, drive along with uh, hands-on competency evaluation. It, it's it's a um, commentary drive is what, what the expectation is of it, if it's going to be in the cab. Uh, tell me, you know, and, and obviously it's it modeled after the Smith system by the way that they can clear their, their, their program. It's not a steel, but it's, it's uh, similar to, and, and I've, I've seen it done in other situations. But, but the, whole, the whole idea is, is don't just drive, but tell me what you're thinking. Tell me why, uh, why you're paying attention to the left-hand mirror while there's a small car coming up, and I'm going to have to pull out into that, into that lane in order to make this turn if I'm driving an 18-wheeler. Uh, it, it, you know, the, looking out the left hand, the right hand side, there's some kids playing on the side of the road. I want to make sure I clear them. Uh, is, the, is the light green? Yes. Is, is it getting stale? I'm talking about all of these different kinds of things. Now, when it, when it comes to the uh, drive behind, that that's going to be the um, the, the auditor or assessor. Uh, paying attention to whether you're using your your uh, traffic your your uh, uh, turn signals correctly, whether you've got your lights on, whether you've taken the time to actually go and make sure that the reflective striping on your on your vehicle is clean and you can you can see it, uh, and, and you've uh, probably had a, a walk around. Uh, uh, we, we call it a six point walk around, the top, the bottom, the two sides, the front, and the back, and it goes obviously deeper, gets into the engine compartment, gets into the into the cab of the vehicle, and all the rest of it. Uh, but, but we we want to promote the idea uh, that uh, the driver's license that I got in 1962 or somewhere around there um, should not still count. And yes, that's the last time I took a driving test. Things have changed. Uh, we we have so many more gadgets in our vehicles. We have so many more ways that we can distract ourselves and we can count because we've got sensors on the side. The rear view mirror starts blinking and beeping at you that someone's pulling up alongside you. I, I have a friend who the only way he avoids accidents is because of those things. Uh, and, and it becomes so important as a passenger. He hates it when I'm in there as a passenger because as soon as he starts messing around uh, with the GPS, I'll say, where do you want to go? Just tell me how to run your GPS. And, and he answers his phone. Give me your phone. I'll hand the phone to your wife. She can answer the phone for you. And he, he hates it when I'm in there because he drives with his knee. It's like. I laugh, but, you know, it's true, do, right? Do you, yeah. Do you, do you know who's in the car? And yeah. I wonder if he only drives with his knee when I'm in the car. But, you know. You know, but but he's got he's got the beeper that'll go off so that when he's got his uh, got his uh, hamburger in one hand and his coke in the other, at least he won't spill stuff. He may have a fatal accident, but at least he won't spill his spill his coke. Yeah, yeah. So, good grief! And that's that's another thing that we do teach: speak up. As passengers, you play a role in it too. It's your life. Speak up. Say something. We we do stop work routinely in this business. How about when we're driving down the road? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I, I have I have a, a a friend that I used to drive with, and uh, they used to say, you know, I've never been in an accident. I don't know why you're saying or 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 screaming or doing all those things. And I said, y yes, the only reason you haven't had an accident is because I scream before the moment of impact. <laughs> and and uh, you know. So, so look, it, it's, it's six of one, half a dozen, the other, right. But, but I really truly believe that you speak up no matter what that people, people think they're great drivers and, and uh, you know, that's not an excuse. I've never had an accident. Yeah. Cause, cause I scream way before yeah, you, I, you hit that I've person. I've never, I've yeah. never been killed. <laughs> right. going to happen one day or I'll just funny, die, but I've never Dude, been killed. Zombie funny, drivers, zombie <laughs> drivers.
Well, well, thanks, Bill, for coming on the show. You have been a lovely guest. I, oh, I really enjoy um, speaking to you every time I get a chance to. I know I know James is the same. Um, I think people really should be looking out for this this new uh, safe driver course uh, that you put together. I love that it's got the drive along um, and the drive behind. I think that's a really great feature. Um, you know, when people start to think about what they're actually thinking about, I think it 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 makes you uh, be a little more cautious about what you're doing. So thank you from from my heart for coming on and talking to us. Oh, and uh, I'll thank, put it thank on you for news. having. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And for those of you that are listening to this podcast and are Vair Force instructors or affiliated in the Vair Force network, Bill and I will be in Midland, Texas at the Holiday Inn on April the 24th, April the 24th. <laughs> and uh, you should be receiving some information about this. This is an instructor event in Midland, Texas, designed for instructors in that area, but any instructor can come. There's no cost to, to attend. But in the afternoon session, you should be getting some information in your email about this afternoon session where Bill will be teaching a train the trainer for those of you who would like to become authorized Veriforce instructors in our new course, Safe Driver. So look in your email from uh, for uh, correspondence from Veriforce and come out and see me and Bill. Bill's going to teach. I'm just going to hang out, and we can talk about how I've been driving for 52 years since I'm 52 years old. Roll Tide. <laughs> Roll Tide. <laughs> Roll Tide. But thank you for everyone who, who participates, who listens to our podcast. Again, we're over there on YouTube. Hit that like button. Smash that subscribe button. Make sure you're all getting those alerts. New episodes drop every Tuesday, sometime around lunch, Central Time. Look for us on Spotify. I have it on my phone. When the episode is uploaded, it lets me know it's there when I can go back and listen to it uh, in my leisure. So thank you again for participating. Thank you, Bill, for coming on and for what you do to bring workers home safe from high hazard jobs. And thank all of you for what you do in accomplishing our mission which is to keep getting those workers home safe.